Hi guys, good morning. This is Ango Guys. Welcome to the channel. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. And for those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. I greatly appreciate it. Um, if anybody's interested in going over to, uh, to Patreon and supporting the channel, please go to patreon.com and um, Pick a subscription level and you will get the daily forecast a day early. There's also other available readings that are only available on the Patreon uh, page, depending on which level you describe that you subscribe at. So this is, we are now at a new week and the starting of a new week. So we're doing now uh, Sunday, September 20th through the 26th. So this is not only the setup for kind of Sunday, September 20th, but it also gives us the underpinning energy of what we're going to be maybe looking forward to throughout the week. So we're experiencing during the week. Now, for those of you that, you know, don't relate to this reading, that's completely fine. It doesn't necessarily mean that anything's wrong. It just might mean that you are um, experiencing or working on something totally different than, you know, what the majority of people are. Um, if you're watching this at any time that's not during those dates, don't worry about that. There still might be something in this reading that you can use. Um, I believe that when I, you know, get ready to do the reading every morning, I set the intention for it to be for the highest good of the greater collective. Therefore, when it finds its way to you is kind of when it's supposed to. So, um, you don't have to turn it off if it's not the week that it was, you know, that that's listed on the front. Um, each card will represent for about two, maybe three days. Some of you may experience all of these cards. Some of you may experience only one of these cards. Some of you may experience, you know, all of these cards and then some. Each person's journey is going to be slightly different. Um, it is a broad spectrum reading for a multitude of people. So just apply what I say, where it applies and makes sense in your life as best you can, and any, any decisions that you choose to make after watching this video are your responsibility. So, um, always trust your information or intuition kind of over my own, if that makes sense. So let's get into this and see where we're at today. I'm kind of excited. Last week was a little bit sort of emotional and transformative, so we can just see what transpires this week. I also believe that we're going into Libra season. So that will be going on too. That shift will be taking place. All right, so, ooh. Our uh, beginning of the week is the Nine of Pentacles. Um, I like this card. Uh, she's always pictured alone, but there's like sort of a self-sufficiency to the Nine of Pentacles, right? Um, there's an abundance to the nines, right? And it's always like a personal level of abundance. Pentacles obviously dealing with the sign of uh, the element of earth. So we're talking about, you know, material wealth and things like that. Pentacles to me are slower energy, but they tend to be a bit grounded. Um, nine would be about, for me, kind of maybe purveying and looking over everything that we have going for us, being appreciative of that, really understanding the abundance and sort of the grace that we have been, uh, you know, given, so to speak. Uh, I would also go, I, I don't know why I'm hearing this phrase in my head, but our ducks maybe might be getting into a row here. Um, it's sort of like seeing uh, uh, financially, uh, oper you know, material opportunities, relationships, maybe coming into alignment, uh, bearing fruit, uh, anything that we were like sort of struggling with last week, um, it appears as though, you know, we might have reached a plateau with that or a, um, uh, a shift in that where we feel kind of empowered by it, in control of it, um, uh, able to handle whatever sort of faces us. She is still sort of looking to the past to me in this card, so we, there might be some loose ends that we're tying up, um, uh, but I like that she also has this falcon on her hand, right? Which denotes this idea of sort of wealth and abundance, but it also kind of says to me that like she can maybe send her falcon out into the future to kind of suss out maybe a plan and sort of form her plan in the moment. She certainly has the resources, the ability, the skill set 
to be able to adapt and move in ways that she needs to. So I really like this as the beginning of the week card. Hopefully we're going to feel that she's also depicted in this, you know, golden field of wheat. Another sort of idea of um, uh, abundance and all of that. But there's like a brightness to the beginning of the week. I feel like there's a uh, self-fulfillment, uh, feeling content, maybe even beyond content, feeling abundant would be nice. Uh, so hopefully you guys are experiencing that. Now let's go to the midweek card and see what the, oh Jesus. All right, so we have the Ace of Wands. So, and Wands is the element of fire and the element of um, spirit, right? Aces always represent this idea of new beginnings, things being offered to us, new paths opening up. Uh, new desires maybe being born or new opportunities being presented to us that we feel compelled to want to take. Um, uh, Ace of Wands is always about action, right? Um, taking that sort of inspired action, sometimes maybe having to think outside of the box, but uh, opening up our mind, our heart, our spirit to the idea of what's out there and what's available to us. We did see that Ace of Pentacles in the midweek last week. So, with that coupled with this nine of pentacles, it looks like maybe we've, uh, hopefully some of us have partaken and taken up that new beginning of the nine of pentacles is that's brought us to this space at the beginning of the week of feeling secure in this nine of pentacles energy, right? Where it's sort of up to us, we feel empowered, we feel ready to make those decisions in the early part of the week. And then in the midweek, these kind of, uh, what I would say would be uh, new opportunities or new ideas, uh, new avenues opening up that excite us in a very uh, powerful way or a uh, uh, new way, right? And so again, we still have this, oh, excuse me, this golden background, which speaks to this idea that I feel like the, at least the early part and the midweek are going to be very positive, bright, sunny, um, you know, imbued with energy. We might feel energized and excited about whatever it is we're working on. Uh, this ace, though, it does still carry over that singularity that I see with this single woman in the field. I mean, she has that worker standing behind her, so she has assistance, but it's really kind of she's in the driver's seat. The ace of wands also feels like we continue to be in the driver's seat or the decisions are solely left on our shoulders, but that's completely fine. I feel like there's an uptick in energy, a surge, an excitement, right, to want to get things done, to take action to uh, feel inspired and really embracing that wholeheartedly. So in the end of the week, beautiful, we have the Knight of Wands. So Knights to me are always about nobility, service, doing the right thing, loyalty, um, kind of protection, feeling secure, um, taking care of ourselves. Uh, the Knight of Wands is, a, is to me a sort of fast moving energy. He can be about like uh, sort of he, uh, it's interesting to me because he's sort of facing in in uh, uh, towards the past, which doesn't necessarily bother me, but it feels like we might be tidying up, finishing up loose ends, cleaning things up, uh, really sort of taking um, initiative to uh, move ourselves away from those things. It almost feels like whatever she's kind of coming to terms with or, or separating herself from, this new opportunity comes in the midweek and then we start to say like, okay, well then I want this, so now I need to make sure that all of that back there is cleared up, right? All of that stuff is like sort of free and clear, so I don't have anything impeding me, holding me back. And so you're, you're doing it with your best of effort, you're doing it with your most best of intentions, right? But there's this fiery action that uh, comes with the Knight of Wands that feels like we are taking um, uh, an opportunity to uh, do the right thing and, and make sure that all sort of, I, I don't know why I want to say this, but it feels like loose ends are being tied up um, so that he can then like sort of right that horse, turn it around and move forward into whatever new is coming in the future. So I feel like these are all three really positive and good cards. They feel all very stable to me. And it feels like for some of you, I mean, maybe for the majority of you, there's new things on the horizon that either you've, I don't know if you've known that they're coming, but if you haven't, be prepared for them to show up. Be prepared and open to the idea of them taking place. Be prepared and open to the idea 
of the excitement of them and the action that needs to take place. The Knight of Wands at the end of the week feels like the journey just begins. It's like we make a commitment to that Ace of Wands and then the excitement kind of opens up. We need that Knight to kind of get into that servitude and start moving with us, doing the work, uh, clearing up loose ends uh, and moving forward. You know, like shifting whatever it is that we're trying to uh, shift. We're grateful for everything that we have with that Nine of Pentacles, but we're kind of, it looks like we're about to sort of either expand or begin to create more, um, especially with that Ace and that Knight um, kicking in in the latter part of the week. So let's see what's going on with the Moonology deck. What moon do we need to be paying attention to? Oh, interesting. Full moon in Taurus. Your dreams need a practical plan. I love the, how this is pink and green. And rich, this moon, it makes me go straight to like the heart chakra. That also ties me into sort of that element of fire and the spirit with the knight and the ace of um, wands. To me, whatever sings to our heart this week, we should really be listening to. Uh, the dreams needing that practicality, that sort of also that nine of pentacles energy at the beginning of the week. We don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Sometimes that fiery wand energy, we can get excited and want to move maybe more quickly than the situation will allow. Um, this new moon or full moon in Taurus says that we, things are abundant. We have what we need. Stay balanced, stay logical, stay strong, and just continue to work forward with your uh, towards your dream uh, with practical steps. And it feels to me like you're about to, you're able to get there. There's like, I don't feel like there's any stopping you with this card. I love the green and pinks of this card. To me, it feels like our heart and our kind of, you know, is aligned up with sort of the material aspect of this. So if we kind of man like manage both of them really well, keep a practical head, a logical mind, and move forward. It's similar to the saw card we saw yesterday, which was um, hold on to the vision, right? That sort of also kind of feels like this idea of your dreams needing a practical plan. Taurus is calling out for that, keeping our mind clear. Let me put last week's Diamond Stones back in the bag. And let's see what the Diamond Stone is. Okay, so we have Wisdom. So, grounding in our own personal wisdom, right? I think that that's what we see with this balance in the um, Nine of Pentacles, right? She's appreciative. She's aware of her worth. She's aware of her strength. She's aware of being able to do this on her own. There's no doubt here by any means. The Ace of Swords also has that sort of singular purpose to it. Uh, there is an opportunity that's, I think, being graced to us that if we ground throughout the week in our own per personal and internal wisdom and trust that wisdom, have that conversation with ourselves throughout the entirety of this week, that's also going to allow us to keep that full moon of Tor in Taurus energy in place where we can keep our dreams ahead of us, but with a like sort of a logical or practical uh, 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 vibration or uh, concept, uh, perspective towards leading us there, right? That wisdom is going to guide us through everything that we need to do this week. I really feel like this is a very um, uh, uh, inspired week, but maintaining a level of practicality is going to just sort of help keep everything in balance as you move it forward. I feel like between the Ace and the, um, the Ace of Wands and the Knight of Wands, <clears throat> we have that sort of fiery desire, right? That ability to want to take action, get things done, be inspired and excited. But with this uh, Nine of Pentacles and this Full Moon in Taurus, it says also stay grounded, stay smart, keep in that wisdom. Uh, and, and, you know, you may learn things, a few uh, things as you move through this week, too, that you can add to that pool of wisdom, but grounding in that idea that you've got this, you can do this, you can um, move this in a smart and uh, uh, sort of savvy way without needing like any sort of trickery or or manipulation in, in, in the sense of like, you know, trying to get one over on anybody. None of that's needed. You can just sort of move forward with excitement and, and really truly feel that excitement and, and, and be... Um, uh, 
vibrating from that place, it's going to move you through in a very nice sort of balanced, um, uh, grounded way. I hope that makes sense, guys. That is your forecast for the week. Please leave me a comment. Hit the thumbs up if you like the reading. Tune in tomorrow and we'll see how this builds upon throughout this week. And I will see you then. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys, and have a great day. Okay, take care and bye-bye. <clears throat>